Hi, this is Charles Hoskinson broadcasting live from warm, sunny Colorado. Always warm, always sunny, sometimes Colorado. Today is April 16th. You get a double header and we're going to talk a little bit about a topic near and dear to all of our hearts, regardless of where you live. If you're in the crypto space, the true cost of regulation. So there was something that uh, Commissioner Pierce of the Securities Exchange Commission recently tweeted and let me bring it up for you guys. She says, we at the SEC need to do our part to ensure that the U.S. is a why not kind of place where people are free to pursue their dreams. And she's got this uh, nice long speech. And of course, what one, one can do is stick it in Claude and summarize it. So I'll summarize it for you. In this speech, SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce discussed the importance of sensible securities regulation and fostering an environment that encourages innovation, entrepreneurship, and risk-taking in the United States. She emphasized that the SEC should strive to create a regulatory framework that supports the American spirit of freedom and opportunity. Key points. One, the SEC's mission is to protect investors, facilitate capital for innovation, and maintain fair, orderly, and efficient markets. Yeah, okay. We can all agree to that. In recent years, the SEC has become increasingly prescriptive in its rulemaking, which can discourage innovation and create barriers to entry. Oh, you better believe that. Three, the SEC should use its exemptive authority to accommodate new products, technologies, and business models rather than rejecting them outright. Yeah, that's pretty good. Number four, the SEC should focus on fostering regulatory predictability, taking a prudent and iterative approach to regulation, embracing the challenge of dealing with with novel legal questions and exploring ways to use new technologies to become a better regulator. Yeah, yeah, that seems pretty sensible. Number five, the SEC's approach to regulating cryptocurrency and blockchain technology has been inconsistent. Oh, absolutely. And created uncertainty for market participants. You better believe it. And I'm going to give you an example in just a moment. The SEC should educate its staff about new technologies like artificial intelligence and embrace their use to enhance the ability to execute its mission. Okay. So it's a great speech if you actually have time to read it outright, but uh, it is what it is. It's just a speech. Let me tell you, though, about the real cost of regulation in the United States. So this is a, uh, a letter I got from the government of Switzerland, and I'll read it off to you. Personal invitation, Mr. Charles Hoskinson, Wheatland, Wyoming. Dear Charles, this autumn marks the 10th anniversary of the Crypto Valley a milestone we are eager to celebrate. Over the past decade, Crypto Valley has expanded across Switzerland and is now home to 1,300 active companies generating immense value, employment opportunities, and innovation. When you and your co-founders chose Switzerland as the birthplace of pioneering the Ethereum blockchain, nobody could foresee our nation becoming renowned as a global leader in crypto only five years later. It was originally a group of visionary foreigners, uh, foremost among them yourselves, who were attracted to Switzerland, perhaps because the nation embodies so much of what blockchain is all about, especially decentralization and consensus. By the way, Switzerland doesn't have a leader. It has a board of seven, and the leader of that is the president, and it's a confederacy. It's not a federal bureaucracy. The establishment of Ethereum a decade ago is widely regarded as the big bang of Crypto Valley. We were the second crypto company. The first was uh, Bitcoin Suisse, which is run by my good friend, Nicholas. Therefore, we wish to spotlight Ethereum and its founders at the center of this anniversary celebration. Looking back at the genesis of Crypto Valley is not only a source of pride for the canton of Zug, but it is also a nationwide success story. It is therefore our distinct pleasure that the future president of the Swiss Confederation and Finance, Mr. Uh, has graciously agreed to take over the patronage of this anniversary celebration. Jubilee will take place as part of the CV Summit on the evening of October 2nd in Zouk. We would like to extend a warm personal invitation to you to join us and celebrate. This invitation comes from the canton of Zug, the city of Zug, as well as the Swiss Blockchain Federation, the SBF. We'll also extend the invitation on behalf of the uh, federal councillor. As a politician, I must say I am proud and happy because each of the 1,290 companies reflects Switzerland's innovation, innovative heritage and strengthens the local and global economy. Blockchain is a solution providing stability, efficiency, and resiliency, factors that our turbulent world urgently needs and much of which originate from Switzerland. This is the part of the letter that made me incredibly bittersweet. We can observe now that blockchain and Crypto Valley has evolved into a distinct, highly innovative industry. The figures speak for themselves. The Crypto Valley is home to 
1,290 companies making a 13.6% increase from previous year. Of the 1,290 companies, the majority, 512, are domiciled in Zug, followed by Zurich in Geneva. The valuation of the top 50 Crypto Valley companies has seen a remarkable surge of 106% to a total of $382.93 billion. Think about that. $382.93 billion. The Jubilee is not just a celebration. It is a statement on how the combi combination of a strategic location and an innovative pioneers like the founders of Ethereum can collaborate uh, to launch a success story. We'd be delighted to welcome you personally to Zook. And then there's hand signatures from the various government officials. This is the price of regulation. People went to Switzerland because the United States shut its door. When the United States made a decision to become a hostile jurisdiction to crypto, the real life consequences are over 1,000 businesses went to Switzerland, one of the most expensive countries in the world to incorporate in, that is not known for being a startup hub. A third of a trillion dollars of value left the United States. You have a commissioner of the SEC say, we're not doing a good job in inconsistent rulemaking is creating a real problem. What I can do to fill in that comment is give you guys from Switzerland's perspective, and this is just Switzerland. Dubai and Abu Dhabi are in Singapore are also jurisdictions that have similar success stories and hundreds, if not thousands of businesses and the accumulative values in the trillions of dollars today. One of the fastest growing industries in human history. The current regulatory regime in the United States is shutting the doors to trillions of dollars of value and shutting the door to thousands, eventually tens of thousands of businesses. So when you hear Elizabeth Warren go up there and say, we're all criminals and uh, we just we just want to launder money. When you hear the Treasury Department say something crazy or certain people regulate like madmen and submit here and there, it doesn't help us as a nation. It hurts us. It certainly helps these guys. They're clever. They're smart. I know that uh, there are certain authors floating around out there that like to diminish my role in the founding of Ethereum, but you know, I, I was only there for six months, so I couldn't do much. But I'll tell you one thing I did do. I negotiated with the Swiss. I was the guy who pushed for us to be there. And I sat with Luca Miller and others at MME Partners, and we had to talk directly to the Swiss government. Every single day in negotiations with the Swiss government, they kept asking, What's in it for Switzerland? What are you doing for the Swiss people? How many Swiss are you going to hire? How will this benefit Switzerland? And I looked them straight in the face and I said, you know, if you give us a chance, this is going to create an industry in your nation. And you know what they did? They said, welcome to Switzerland. Don't make it our problem. They signed a tax ruling within just a matter of weeks and we had absolute regulatory clarity. We were able to incorporate there and over a thousand businesses followed suit. And it gave them a third of a trillion dollars of business value, probably 10,000 Swiss jobs all in. It replaced industries there. It was that big. They negotiated. They put controls. It wasn't like it was an unregulated activity. There were lawyers involved. There's businesses involved. There's auditors involved. There's rule of law there. There's consumer protections there. But it was a negotiation for the good. In Wyoming, we've passed as an industry 31 laws in cooperation with the state of Wyoming. We have all this amazing stuff that if it was made into national policy would make the United States of America an even better jurisdiction than Switzerland to incorporate a crypto business in. All they have to do is just say, make it the law. That's it. You have speedy banks for stablecoin registration. You have token taxonomy. You even have a law for DAOs and how to represent DAOs and create legal character for it. Think about that. And why don't we make this the law of the land? I don't know. I know the consequences to it. I, I know the impact that this has. And when you go to vote in 2024, and when you talk to your government officials, when you, you represent things, really do understand this is not an abstract concept. This is a concept about the economy as a whole. Where are the jobs going to come from? How do we pay down the debt? Where do the high value things come from? How does America keep its status as a dominant country in the world? It's all economics at the end of the rainbow. And you have a choice to make. 
Do you destroy jobs or do you create them? Do you embrace the future or do you ignore the future? The future is the future. It's going to come regardless if we want it or not. And somebody is going to get this done. And the people who do, they win. It's why we saw Spain collapse and England and uh, the Dutch rise. And then later in the arrogance of the UK and their empire, the United States was able to rise and dominate the 20th century. The 21st century, it's unwritten. And the winners are going to be the ones who embrace exponential technologies and win those games. And I'm here to directly tell you, we're not doing it right in the U.S. Everybody knows it deep down in your bones. So in 2024, we get to make a choice at the ballot box. And I encourage you, if you're an American, vote pro-crypto. Don't care the political party. Don't care if it's third party, left or right. Don't really care. If they're anti-crypto, vote no. If they're pro-crypto, vote yes. Don't care. Because we need this here. It's bittersweet to get a letter from the president of another country inviting me uh, to go to a jubilee celebrating the fact that my country was so bad that it lost a third of a trillion dollars worth of business. And this is not a dig on Switzerland. I love Switzerland. It's one of my favorite countries. And they're amazing people. And they're some of the best engineers. And it's one of the most beautiful countries in the world. On the other hand, I am an American. I was born in America. Grew up in Hawaii. Got a ranch in Wyoming. Live in Colorado as well. And I'm getting real tired every year of watching the decline. And I'm getting real tired of every year everybody being so cynical and pessimistic. Snap the fuck out of it. We own this country, the American people. And ultimately, it's our decision what to do, where to go, and how to get there. And these should be wake-up calls that we're not winning. These should be wake-up calls that the way we're doing things is hurting our ability in the future to get where we need to go. And I've been around the world enough to know who the winners are and the losers are. And I can tell you right now, we will not win in five years or 10 years. And the only group of people that can change it is us. If we make this an issue, if people understand there's political consequences for being anti-crypto, then they'll suddenly get pro-crypto. And then that will open up the doors and allow this industry to take the roots that it needs to take. And we will create hundreds of thousands of jobs and trillions of dollars of wealth. Or we can allow the current state of affairs to continue to foment. The U.S. will continue to grow in its hostility and then eventually 100% of this industry will get offshored, except for a small group of cronyistic businesses that are already nepotistically in bed with the legacy. And we will lose the future. What would America be if Google, Microsoft, IBM, Apple, HP, Facebook, all these companies, Amazon, were incorporated in Germany instead of the United States or the UK? Tell me. How many jobs would we have? How much wealth would we have? How much geopolitical influence would we have? The integrity of our nation, our national security, and the sanctity of the economic union that we have forged is at stake. Not to mention the profound implications of handing over our cybersecurity capabilities to our adversaries because our industry is the number one employer, trainer, and producer of information security experts, cryptographers, and cybersecurity experts by volume. We are the number one. You throw this industry away, you throw that talent away too. You lose all those people. Tell me how we're going to win the cyber war then. So these are the consequences of the Elizabeth Warrens of the world. These are the consequences of this language that's coming out and how people are doing things. And I commend the people in government who recognize this and make statements that we ought to be better and work with people, negotiate. It's not about rolling over and letting an industry do what it wants to do. Switzerland certainly didn't do that. It is one of the most rule of law countries you'll ever go to in your life. There is a strict social order there. You do not violate the law in Switzerland. That's very clear. That's why I said, don't make it our problem. You can do business, but you have to do business right, ethically, with integrity. But all we ask is the negotiation. Clear regulations, clear rulemaking, and fair rulemaking that allows people to operate when they're innovating and doing great things. Because the consequences of that innovation is economic identity, self-sovereign identity, banking the unbanked, connecting the unconnected, and ultimately making the world a more prosperous and equal place for us all instead of for the few.
So that, my friends, is the price of regulation. Talk to you soon.